Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. Now I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about season four, episode 22, the final episode of season four. Believe it or not, guys, we are going to just waltz our way right into the last season of Miami Vice. That our two year journey has brought us to this point, to this point, <laughs> to the sunny amnesia point. Since day one, we were waiting to get to here. We are finally here. This episode is titled Mirror Image, and it originally premiered on May 6, 1988. It is written by Daniel Sackheim and Nelson Oramas. Now, Nelson Oramas, I want to talk about. Daniel Sackheim doesn't write any more episodes. Nelson Oramas was in the episode Smuggler's Blues as the bomb specialist who disarmed the bomb when it was attached to Trudy. He was also the bomb specialist in the episode Sons and Lovers with the bit when baby tubs disappeared and that the car exploded well he's not very good at his job <laughs> <laughs> he also appeared in another episode he didn't write down because he wasn't a bomb specialist in that episode that, that one doesn't matter <laughs> do you think they just kept hiring him as an uh extra like he, he kept trying to like pitch him his episode like i wrote one guys like come on you know they're like oh, okay okay <laughs> I wrote one, guys. Let's I wrote see what one. You got. I'm gonna blow up Sunny. Like, all right, Nelson. I think you got an explosion <laughs> problem. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the director is Richard Compton, who also directed, as you all know, Down for the Count, Part One and Two. Everyone's in sh- or everybody's in showbiz in the Big Thaw. But he's got two more episodes. <laughs> we gotta talk about that Big Thaw one. <laughs> Still floating around out there, Melissa. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Never been found. Before we get started, I can check in and see what's going on in each other's lives. Guys, I got a programming note for all you pals out there. So this is, as we mentioned, the final episode of season four. So we're wrapping up a season. We're going to do what we normally do, which is we do one episode where we take a look back at season four and talk about all the highlights and guest stars and music and our favorite episodes and our favorite guest stars and everyone else that was on and then we take a look forward to season five we kind of take our uh, guess at what we think is going to happen in the season and melissa laughs at us over her brandy <laughs> she swirls it you have no idea yes <laughs> so that'll happen next week and then the week after that will be our season four clip show which is always a ton of fun picking out our favorite moments from the season so we'll have that and then we're going to take a little break pals We're going to take a nice three-week vacation, but we're not going to leave you high and dry. We are. What we're going to do is we're going to put in our top three episodes of season four. Now, this isn't the top three Vice episodes. I think based on the selection that was in this season, it's pretty clear what the top three episodes are. House of October. (laughs) We're looking at you. (laughs) What we're going to do is we're going to add the top three Go With The Heat episodes from season four. It's going to give us a time to get our bodies and brains ready for season five and the continuation of Sunny Amnesia. Give us a chance to take a little breather and then also to re-air these, our three favorites. So we want to hear from you. Email us, gowiththeheat at gmail.com. Put in the subject line season four favorite and vote on your favorite tell us what your number one favorite episode of go with the heat was in season four then we're going to tally up all the votes and then we'll put out our top three reruns we're going to do like a summer a summer rerun yep <laughs> three weeks the summer reruns by style <laughs> <laughs> so we'd love to hear from you email us go with the heat at gmail.com let us know what your favorite go with the heat episodes are from season four and then we'll be back School will be back in session, and we'll be ready for Season 5 of Miami Vice and our sprint to the end of the show. All right, John, this is a music segment of fantastic band names. What do you got for us this week? All right, so let's start with the one I've already mentioned before. We have the song Money God by Big Pig. Big Pig, you might remember from our episode of Spalls of Death. They were the Australian rock group funk rock group from 1985 1991 to refresh your memory they are the band had like eight or nine drummers and they were inspired by those japanese taiko drummers their signature look was wearing those black waterproof aprons (laughs) you remember me talking about them yeah. yeah, that's Big Pig. Long story short, uh, they had a short run. They had a crap load of drummers, like eight people sang at one time. It was just chaos. Chaos, people. 
<laughs> but for some reason, people in Australia, uh, mostly in Australia and New Zealand, liked it. If there was ever a place in the world for chaos to reign supreme, it's New Zealand and Australia. So now that we've reminisced about Big Big, let's talk about some other funny band names. <laughs> Let's go with Bedbugs and Ballyhoo, the song by Echo and the Bunnymen. They're an English rock band formed in 1978. The original lineup was Ian McCulloch on vocals, William Sargent on guitar, and Les Pattinson on bass, along with the most important band member, Drum Machine. <laughs> Yes, they didn't actually have a drummer. They had a drum machine when they first rolled out. But eventually, by 1980, they would bring in D. Fritas as the drummer to replace the important, irreplaceable member <laughs> drum machine. <laughs> Basically, Ian McCulloch, he, he had been in a few smaller bands. I often like to talk their previous band names because I find a lot of these people's previous bands have fantastic names he started out in like a garage band called crucial three he then did a band called a shallow madness now shallow madness clearly wasn't succeeding because of their name so they changed it to the teardrop explodes <laughs> things were weren't working out and so they fired Ian McCulloch. Ian McCulloch joined with Sargent and Pat uh, Pattinson to come up with Echo the Bunnyman and just to make things completely ironic, they would debut opening for, you guessed it, The Teardrop Explodes. <laughs> <laughs> the band he was previously fired from at a, at a club in Liverpool. Hey, guess what, Teardrop Explodes? You may have fired them. But Echo and the Bunnymen, way more successful than anyone from The Teardrop Explodes. In fact, I don't even know if they ever made it out of Liverpool. <laughs> so Echo and the Bunny Men, they debuted with their album Crocodiles, which hit, uh, which landed in the top twenty UK charts. They would see mainstream success with their album Porcupine, which would climb to number two in the UK, and then their success would peak in 1984 with Ocean Rain, which reached number four, pretty much the high point in their career, because in 85, they would release a single and a compilation album called Songs to Learn and Sing. After that, drummer De Fruitas would leave the band. They would record another album with a less successful album with a temporary drummer, and then McCulloch himself would quit in 88. And to make things worse for the Bunnymen, Fritas would die in a motorcycle accident in 1989. The remaining members would scramble. They would try to reforge some semblance of a band, but fans and critics weren't fooled. So they would end up disbanding by 1993. After that, McCulloch and Sargent, uh, Sargent would work together in 94 under the new name Electro Fiction. But ultimately, they would rebuild the Bunnymen in 97 continue touring and releasing all throughout the 2000s. So then we jump to Alpha Centauri by Tangerine Dream. Tangerine Dream, another fantastic name. <laughs> they are the German electronic music band formed in 1967 by Edgar Frosch. Frosch pretty much being the main, the only common member of the band. They would see very, very main lineup changes over the years, but Frosch would... would the only continuous member until his death in 2015. Now, most bands, when like the lead singer dies and they have to hold auditions to replace them, Roche actually named a successor. <laughs> so when he passed away in 2015, Thorsten Quashening. <laughs> now, uh, now heads the band. He was promoted, obviously. Frost after being his successor and he's been the most a member of the band because he joined as far back as 2005. A little bit about uh, Tangerine Dream or aka Edgar Froish. He was really a pioneer in like electronic music. Aside from releasing over a hundred albums, 
He composed film soundtracks for over 20 movies. Damn. Some of those movies, Sorcerer, Thief, Risky Business, Firestarter, etc., etc. Even helped create the soundtrack for Grand Theft Auto V. Really? <laughs> Froish uh, arrived in West Berlin in the 1960s to study art. His first band, The Ones, disbanded after only one single. <laughs> A little foreshadowing. I, I know. Like, like you only lasted one song. Does that even count? <laughs> and they're appropriately named the ones, though. So, like, it's almost like they knew. So, after that debacle, he would play smaller gigs at the world-famous Zodiac Free Arts Lab, including, which is very cool, playing for surrealist painter Salvador Dali while he painted. Damn. Guy's got some serious connections. What makes him super cool too, and like what made him one of the pioneers of electronic or electro electronic music was that Froch he was fascinated by technology and he often built custom made instruments as well as collecting sounds, uh, random sounds with a tape recorder to use in his music. So like he was the first on like mixing all that stuff in and and he was really doing it by building everything himself. Like he didn't have like, mixers and, and all of the equipment equalizers and stuff that people have today so when those things started to come out like his stuff got even better pretty much the their fame ran through the 70s which is often known as their virgin records era uh, and they toured extensively in the 70s and 80s so but ultimately Froish would die in 2014 of a pulmonary embolism and like i mentioned earlier he'd already named his successor so uh, we ahead. wish <laughs> Planning ahead, and we wish Thorsten, you know, all of the best, even though Forge's kid doesn't think he can hack it, but, you know. <laughs> I feel like I'm underprepared for this podcast, and I need to set a successor. There needs to be a successor to the professor. <laughs> <laughs> you just had yes. to say that. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Random side note from pop culture. In the 1983 movie Valley Girl, Nicolas Cage... Cage's character, Randy, can be seen wearing a Tangerine Dream concert t-shirt during the I Melt With You montage. Mm. So That's the best montage ever. <laughs> no. Yes. No. no. I know it's not a Rocky montage. The best montage ever is in Rocky. So, <laughs> no. This can be number two. We, we disagree about which montage is the best, though, so we can't get into that. Yeah, yeah, because Rocky IV montage <laughs> with a robot and... Apollo Creed dying is the greatest montage ever. Oh, yeah. Okay. We do agree then. We agree. I thought you were going to talk about the one where they, the montage where they run on the beach. Because that's in that. So see, it's like it breaches both. Oh, okay. okay. But the part where they run into the water, then they hug each other. That's from Rocky Short III. shorts and halter yeah. tops on. Yeah, that would be. But it's it's in the Rocky IV montage too. Like he he pictures yeah. that whole running scene. Plus so there's a robot. It's got everything. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. We agree. All right. So that's you guys' music. And actually, a little bit, uh, quite, you know, more famous than it would appear by their goofy names. Just remember, this music segment had Salvador Dali with bands such as Big Pig, Echo and the Bunnymen, <laughs> and Tangerine Dream. <laughs> Who would know, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, and I threw a Valley Girl, Nick Cage mm -hmm. <laughs> reference in there, along with a Billy Idol song montage moment. <laughs> so we're going places, folks. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go give our final thoughts on this, the last episode of season four. And that's it of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know what your thoughts are on this episode. We are in unanimous decision here that this is a fantastic episode of Vice. My frustration to end it here and have a summer break is where it is. This is such a good episode. I'm very mad that it doesn't start right away. But in general, we all love this episode. We love where the storyline is going. We are not ready, clearly, to handle season five because things are going to get silly. <laughs> <laughs> and this also means we're saying goodbye to season four and we're going to talk about this in our recap but just you know just remember season four was the most popular season and we were really l looking forward to this because we thought the season was going to get silly and boy howdy did it get silly <laughs> boy howdy <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk more about that next week when we look back at season four what our thoughts are and how the season went we're going to look ahead to season five and like we said, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what your thoughts are on this episode. Let us know what you think is the top 
three episodes of Go With The Heat from Season 4. Email those to go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know what those are. And then we'll put together our summer reruns that we'll have for three episodes before we pick up on Season 5. You can also go to GoWithTheHeat.com. You can go to contact us. You can find all the ways to contact us, including our Twitter and our Facebook and our Instagram. You can find us on all three of those platforms to be able to talk to us. We have special stuff on all three of those places just for Miami Vice fans. You can also click on support us, support number one, emails. Go with the heat at gmail.com. Let us know on those questions. Support step number two, go rate us on your podcatcher platform of choice. Particularly iTunes, if you have an iPhone or that's where you get your podcast, just go there and give it five stars. No one will know that I've asked you and told you to go ahead and give us five stars. That'll help people find the show. It'll help with discoverability. If everyone does it right now, if everyone listens to the show, goes and does it this weekend, that'd be fantastic for the show. But don't write a review. No one ever reads the reviews. Instead, go in there and say, if you were Tubbs, how you would get Sonny to remember you. We want to hear what your fan fiction could be and how you jog Sonny's memory. On, on More sweaty <laughs> foot play. <laughs> <laughs> Remember this, Sonny? <laughs> <laughs> Support step number three. Check out that Patreon. Patreon.com slash go with the heat. We're going into the last season of ice. What are we going to do next? We want to hear from you. We want to see your support. So go check out that Patreon. Patreon.com slash go with the heat. And drop a dollar into our tip jar and let us know where you think we should go next after Miami Vice. Because it's getting real close now. And we're going to be at the end of this show. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, pal.